All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Friday. Happy Friday to everyone out there. March 8th, we got a decent sized NBA slate on today's video to dive into. Like we always do, when I go through each and every one of these games, I'm going to give you my lean on the spread. I'll talk about the total, give you a lean on that. We'll also talk about any player props that I like within the game as well. But make sure to keep an eye on the pinned comment. That's where all of my final plays will live. If you do want to fade me and do the opposite of those, those plays will be listed in the pinned comment. In terms of last night, one, one win away from a sweep there. We go two and one. Kelly Olenek under seven and a half rebounds. That was a sweat-free bet. We'll take the cha-ching. Brandon Pazemski over three and a half assists. He finishes with four. We'll take the cha-ching, but we had to sweat it out. And then Kyrie Irving over eight and a half rebounds plus assists. Uh, we found this in the second video that we posted yesterday. Uh, it was a late ad, and unfortunately, it does not come through. Uh, kind of gave us a run for our money at the end, but he went into halftime with, I think, two assists, zero rebounds. So uphill battle from there. But nonetheless, can't cry over a profitable night. Two and one there. And our ride of the day comes through from Caleb Jonathan Kaminga here over 16 and a half points Jonathan Kaminga finishes with I believe it was 19 points 5 of 11 from the field he had a double double with 10 boards as well so shout out to Caleb here for hitting that ride of the day and we're back on the wind chain in the wind column right so if you guys don't know what the ride of the day is all you got to do is use hashtag ride of the day in the comments and I'm jumping on board with one person's pick giving you a shout out in the next video win or loss also shouting you out over on my Twitter at EvGuyBoston and my Instagram at EvPicks, picks with a Z. Both of those will be kind of rotating throughout the show here in the bottom left of your screen. Make sure you guys do follow me there. Tons of additional content, short form content, um, and different types of content on both of those platforms. So if you guys want more, make sure to check that out. But yeah, just use that hashtag, ride of the day, um, and I'll be picking one person. Now, what we've been doing lately is when someone hits their ride of the day, we continue to ride with them. So we'll be keeping an eye out for Caleb's pick for today's video. Uh, but but if it doesn't get in by 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be keeping an eye out or picking, I should say, someone else's pick. But enough ranting and rambling from me. Let's jump into today's slate so I can ramble some more about some basketball. Started off with the Sixers taking on the Pelicans here. Right now, the spread is sitting at uh, the Sixers getting eight points at home. Total at 221 and a half. This spread is just a little bit too big for me to lay uh, as the Pelicans. So I'm going to lean towards the Sixers here. But I doubt that becomes a final play uh, because I do think that the Pelicans are a better team and they have more rest here. And they just, you know, beat the Raptors. What was it? 140 to under 100, right? Like uh, they beat the Raptors by, I think it was 40 something points. So I mean... You got to give them credit there. Maybe they're playing some decent basketball. Whereas Philadelphia is still kind of in limbo. Like winning games like that Dallas game on Sunday. And then losing two straight to Brooklyn and then Memphis. Like what are we doing here, right? So uh, this this Philly team is just in kind of uh, shambles for now. And we don't really know what to make of it. Uh, Tyrese Maxey out again. Uh, so, you know, that's obviously a huge hit. No Embiid, no Maxey. But again, eight points just seems like it's a little bit too much. Again. If you're on the Pelicans, you want to lay that number, go right ahead. I think they're the better team. I'm just saying it's a little bit too much for me to be comfortable with. So I'm probably sticking away from it or by default leaning towards the Sixers. Um, in terms of a total, I don't mind taking a peek at the over. Uh, this Pelicans team, you know, offensively, a uh, few games in a row now have scored over, uh, I think it was 115, 114, and they went 129, 139. Like, they're playing some efficient basketball here. And uh, Sixers, you know, though... They've had some low-scoring games. Uh, they've been cashing overs, uh, you know, two straight overs that they've cashed. Now, like I said, they haven't been playing that great, uh, and they've been low-scoring games. But 221, you don't really need a bunch of points to cash this over. Like, does this stay in the 220s? Probably. I don't think it's a barn-burning shootout type of a game, but I could see this getting over 221 and a half. So uh, I'll take the over in this spot as well. And then a couple player props that I like. We'll jump into Outlier here, guys. If you don't know what Outlier is, I have a link for this tool in the pinned comment. It comes on desktop and on your phone. Uh, seven days free with that link. It's a no-brainer. Go try it for seven days absolutely free. Like, why wouldn't you do that? This is the best player prop research tool out there. Um, I know Tasso shouts it out in his videos as well. Like, Outlier is goaded. So go check it out, guys. That link is in the pinned comment. But I'm looking at Brandon Ingram over five and a half assists. He's hit it in eight of his last ten. Uh, one of the games they didn't finish it with. Uh, 
Uh, he had five assists, so he's right there on the hook. He's hit it in 75% of games in his last 20. And Brendan Ingram, uh, we flash over to Rotowire here. You can see getting the start at shooting guard, even though he's probably a traditional uh, small forward, but he plays shooting guards. And the Sixers allowing the seventh most assists to the shooting guards, um, shooting guard position on the season here again. He's barely getting it sometimes and barely missing it sometimes. Like any of these sixes, you could say, okay, well, those could have easily missed, right? But you could say the same thing for these five. So I'll take a guy that's been trending all year long to this number, 59% of his games. Um, last time they played, he had six assists as well. So Brendan Ingram over five and a half assists. And then we're also going to take a peek at another assist line here. Buddy Heald, we've cashed this multiple times, right? Over three and a half assists. There's going to be games where he doesn't get the assists, and I totally understand that. Um... Without Tyrese Maxey, you know, uh, he's probably, I mean, his points are inflated, but I was going to say his points line could be something to look at, but at 15 and a half, I don't think so. Same thing with his threes at three and a half now, um, but his assist is kind of where I find the value. Like he can still reach that four number. And if we look at the odds here, FanDuel at minus 145, DraftKings and Caesars, look at those odds, minus 175, minus 235. You could say all you want about a minus 145 juiced play, right? But those plays are ab those that that's absolute value there. Minus 145 for something that another book has at minus 235. So it's also something we're going to consider there. Buddy Heald, uh, shooting guards, New Orleans allowing the third most assists to the shooting guard position. Uh, Buddy Heald getting the start at the shooting guard today. So two player props that are not minding in this game either. Uh, so keep an eye on the pin comment. I would say the player props and the total have a chance of being a final play. That spread pick of the Sixers plus eight really is just kind of like a by default pick. Not too interested in further investigating that. All right, next up, we got the Wizards taking on the Hornets. Um, this is like, I feel like some NBA games, why don't they just roll the dice and, and you know, have a two-sided die or however that would work and just pick who wins, right? Because this game, it's like, what are we doing here? We got the Wizards taking on the Hornets. Um, I do have a player prop that I like in this game, so I guess we can't just roll the dice on that, but even still taking a player prop in this game is probably rolling the dice. But nonetheless, right now, Wizards two and a half point favorites at home. Total sitting at 226 in this one. I think this game goes under. I don't really see uh, a hell of a lot of pace coming in this game, even though Washington plays with crazy pace. Like, Charlotte just doesn't. Um, and I think this kind of slows down because of them. Like, it's been hard for teams to even force them to play fast, you know. Uh, a few fast-paced teams, Milwaukee, Toronto, uh, even Golden State, they had a 97-84 to game against, right? Uh, the only one that you can, uh, Utah, I think that was a low-scoring game, like Charlotte say what you want about how bad they are they've kind of had teams play down to their pace uh for you know a couple weeks now so I do think this one goes under 226 in terms of a spread pick sure I'll take Washington at home but it's nothing confident my main I think player prop lean in this spot is going to be taking a peek at Miles Bridges over 22 and a half points um and the issue here is you know we jump back into outlier it's like okay well the dude has only hit that over in 35 percent of games this year He's only done it in, you know, five or six of his last 20, in two of his last 10, one of his last five. Why the hell are we doing that? Well, if we go over, and this is still a prototype thing that we have going on right now, but we built this in Google Sheets, you could see uh, the, dit, uh, the, ish, the uh, what's, what should I call this? The shooting zone breakdown, right? Of when Charlotte's on, de on offense and Washington's on defense, and when Washington's on offense and Charlotte on defense. By the way, I want to bring this to you guys at some point. I'm just trying to find a clean way to do it, but it's really cool. It's all uh, kind of, you know, visual, I guess. But you can see here, Washington really struggles in the restricted area. Miles Bridges, there's no one else on uh, the, the, the Charlotte Hornets that shoots more shots from the paint and the restricted area uh, than Miles Bridges on this team. So I do like his spot there uh, I kind of was like oh Nick Richards right could that be a spot uh, Nick Richards getting the start at center Kyle Kuzma's opposition um, in terms of Nick Richards's line um, we had let's see um, we had a 11 and a half point and I was like oh I like that he had two points last game like, I can't trust a guy that had two points last game, right? So I'm going to go to the guy that we know is going to shoot uh, a bunch of shots, whether he makes them or not. Like, uh, this is a guy that's probably going to shoot a bunch. And he had 33 points last time he played Washington back in November. So Miles Bridges over 22 and a half points is going to be my player prop look in this spot. But again, guys, this game stinks. Like, this game stinks. You're rolling the dice if you're taking anything in this game.
All right, guys, before we jump into the Minnesota and Cleveland game, I do want to talk to you about a promo going on over on Sleeper for that game. Anthony Edwards, they've knocked his points line down to 0.5 for new users. Make sure to go check out Sleeper. I'm always talking about it, always showing you guys my slips over on Instagram and TikTok. So make sure you guys do sign up. It's a really, really cool DFS pick em app. All you got to do is pick two or more player props, put them in a slip. The more you win, the more you get paid out. It's pretty damn simple. And what's cool about Sleeper is the fact that each and every pick you throw into your slip has its own unique multiplier, meaning your payout is different each and every time. They don't just follow a fixed payout structure like a lot of apps that do. Two for two is three times. No, you put the right picks together, you could literally have like a four something times in a two man slip. Like it is really, really cool. So make sure you guys go check out Sleeper. That link is going to be in the pinned comment. With that link, you'll get this Anthony Davis free square, or it should be a free square, right? As well as a 100% deposit match. Go check it out, guys. That means you could put in 50 bucks, they'll match it. You have a new account balance of 100. You could put in a hundred bucks they'll match it new account balance of you do the math 200 right and i think it even goes up to 500 bucks you could literally put in 500 bucks which is a lot i know but they'll match and you'll have a new account balance playable number of 1000 bucks yikes that's crazy then go check it out guys super super cool app if it's legal and available in your state make sure to hop on sleeper that link is in the pin comment go capitalize on this anthony davis square now let's jump into this game so We'll start with injuries here. No Carl Anthony Towns on the Minnesota side of things. Um, and they're on a back-to-back. And we have on Cleveland's injury report, Donovan Mitchell out, Evan Mobley out, Max Struess out, and then Jerome and Thompson also out as well. Minnesota coming off of a win against Indiana yesterday, a shorthanded win. But the problem with Minnesota is that they're not the best back-to-back team. Only 44% of their games they've covered this season. Um, and Cleveland with a rest advantage. Now, these are all numbers that include, obviously, uh, their stars playing, right? But Cleveland with a rest advantage covering in 83% of games when they have a rest advantage over their opponents. So uh, I do think that that could be a a good spot there. They're coming off a loss to... uh can't even remember who they played, uh, Rockets or no, Atlanta. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'm going to lean towards Cleveland. This line, the fact that it's staying strong at minus one tells me that even with uh, the injuries to Mitchell, Struess, Evan Mobley, like uh, the book still like Cleveland. In terms of where the money is too, um, if we jump into outlier, guys, I know I'm promoting the hell out of outlier, but this is why they are so good. Like it's not just player props, but you can see where the spread money and uh, bets are, right? So for example, money line, a lot of people are on the money line, um, um, percentage-wise for Minnesota, but all of the money is actually on Cleveland. And this is essentially a pick em game. You know, it's a minus one, plus one spread. So this is another cool spot. You can follow the money, and that's where the sharps, or people might say the professionals, are putting their money. So uh, I'm going to follow the money there, and I like Cleveland here on the money line or minus the one point. Um, in terms of the total, 207.5, it seems like it's just too gettable for two teams that should be able to score 100 points regardless of the defense that they're playing. So I'll lean towards the over in this spot and from a player prop perspective because of all the injuries i'm not loving much to be completely honest so we probably pass uh in this spot when it comes to uh player props because you would be looking at sort of these tertiary players uh like isaac okoro i looked at his points and assists and i'm like but he's going up against a really good defense in minnesota like just because there's injuries doesn't mean you have to go down the chain to try and find the opportunity because it's still going to be a good defense you're playing you know what i mean does that make sense so probably skipping player props in this spot All right, Knicks hosting the Orlando Magic here. This spread is a weird one. So this opened up the inverse. So it's actually one and a half now. So it's one on the graphic, but it's one and a half now. But it opened up as Knicks uh, favored by one and a half and quickly throughout the night moved now to the Knicks uh, being underdogs, you know, you know, by one and a half. So kind of interesting there. It's almost like a lot of people came in on the the magic plus one and a half and the books kind of scrambled to try and make that right. So uh, I'm going to follow the number here. I like Orlando uh, in this spot. This they, they've been playing better basketball. Now they haven't had the biggest of like competition. They've played Utah, Detroit, Charlotte and Washington in their last four games even before that it was Brooklyn Atlanta Detroit like they haven't been battle tested in a while and the Knicks you can make the argument that they have Atlanta Cleveland Golden State New Orleans Boston Philly Detroit's in there Uh, they played Orlando and lost to them by I think it was you know 17 points or something uh, a little while back back in February Um, but yeah I think that the Knicks have been battle tested a little bit more but there's a couple ways to look at this. Jalen Brunson, again, on the injury report in this game. Um, so if he doesn't play, I do obviously like Orlando even more. Uh, he didn't play last game. Um, but I just think that the way this line's moving it shows that the books are kind of insecure about letting people take a good number with the Magic, right? So I'll lean towards them. Wendell Carter Jr. is also questionable in this spot. That would be a decent uh, miss for them as well. Uh, but 
In terms of the total here, 207. Now, this is one where, you know, I just said in the last game, I was like, these two teams can score, you know, the Cleveland and Minnesota can score 100 points easily. I don't think that either of these teams can score 100 points easily or definitely. So I am going to lean towards the under ever so slightly. And from a player prop perspective, nothing jumps off the page to me. And I know you guys love and hate when I say that, but we're waiting on Brunson news, Wendell Carter Jr. news, like... And it's going to be a def- it should be a defensive game based on the number, at least offensively sloppy. Uh, there's not even any unders that I really like. So uh, probably skipping player props in this game as well. All right, next up, we have Memphis hosting Atlanta. Memphis getting three points here at home, total sitting at 216. Atlanta has obviously been a shaky team, but they've won two straight games here. Um, they were underdogs against the New York Knicks. They won 116 to 100. We were on the right side of that one. Um, and then they beat the Cavs. They're on, they, we we're also on the right side of that one, um, 112 to, to 101. Memphis has also won two straight games, so I'll give them their flowers there. They're underdogs in both of those games. Ten-point dogs against Brooklyn. They win that game by four. And then they're four-point dogs against Philly. They win that game by six so two of these teams have been winning their last two games I guess we should I was gonna say playing winning basketball but that's a stretch um in terms of where I lean on the spread here uh and also by the way before we get into that injuries obviously uh Memphis's injury report is still the Webster's Dictionary good luck getting through that your eyes get tired before you can finish reading it um and Atlanta's injury report is actually getting up there too but most notably I'm um, gonna be Trey Young and Johnson um out here as is a Kongu. um but yeah so Tons of injuries in this game. Uh, it actually might be easier just to read off Atlanta's uh, starting lineups. So we can jump into Roto-Wire here. Over here, Atlanta, Murray, Bogdanovich, Bay, Hunter, and Capella. That's starting lineup for Atlanta. And then Memphis has Goodwin, Conchar, Williams, Aldama, and Jackson. Okay? It's probably easier to say who is playing than it is to say who is not playing. But I'm going to lean towards Atlanta. I think that they're just a better team overall. Um even without Trey Young. And then in terms of the total 216, like this Atlanta team hasn't been playing with crazy, crazy pace as of late, even though we kind of associate pace with them. Um, also, Memphis, I wouldn't say, has been playing with, you know, that crazy, crazy pace either. This is a tough one. I did go back and forth on this one, um, but ultimately I think that I lean ever so slightly towards taking a peek at the uh, the over. I think this one probably gets like 221 or maybe even like 219. So it's very slightly, very marginal, but I still lean towards the over. Player props in this game, um, I'm probably going to, you know, get burned by this like we did with Alfred Sangoon, but I'm looking for a guy to come back down to earth, and his name is Jaron Jackson Jr. So 46 and 41 PRA or PR points plus rebounds in his last uh, couple games here. But on the season, to that line of 33 and a half, he has just covered it in, or actually he's covered the under in 78% of games. So quick math, beep, boop, bop, boop, 22% of these games, um, he has been cashing the, uh, the, the under, so, or the over. So I do think that this is a good spot for uh, Clint Capella to kind of, you know, be physical with Jackson, keep him off the boards to some degree. And when you actually even look at what he's been doing, it's like, all the rebounds he's getting, like, I don't necessarily think that uh, the Hawks are going to allow him to get that many rebounds. They are middle of the pack in both points and rebounds allowed here, right? So uh, that is obviously a big thing. But in terms of uh, where they rank from a rebound perspective overall, that's where it kind of worries me, like middle of the pack here. But you can see just as a team and overall uh, allowing the 22nd, uh, you know, or the, the 22nd team in terms of rebounds allowed. So there's only a few teams that are worse than them. So it's a little worrisome. But again, I think that this is just a very, very high number and high line here. His PRA line, also pretty high. Uh, but if this is a guy that can go out there and get you, you know, five assists or something like that, I kind of want to just focus on points plus rebounds. So I'm taking the under 33 and a half here in terms of a lean. I like the odds at minus 102 as well. Uh, so keep an eye on the pincom to see if that becomes a final play. Last time he played them, or last few times, right, he stayed well under this number. But that's playing 23 minutes or so um, for the most part. Like, if he's going to get 30 plus minutes, this is where it kind of uh, worries me, right? Like, he's actually cashed this in now uh, 28% of games. It was 22, but points still there that it's kind of increasing the more minutes he plays no kidding but nonetheless guys i'm sticking true to it scared money don't make money fade me.store we have that t-shirt over on the store right now 33 and a half seems like an inflated number for jjj so i'm gonna lean towards the under and I did just talk about FadeMe.Store, so why not give it its full shout-out here, guys? If you want to pick up some merch and support the channel, go to FadeMe.Store. Uh, some great stuff over there. We just launched the Money Gun hat. It's an embroidered premium hoodie as well as the embroidered hat here. Um, we got tons of stuff in the new arrival section as this loads up. The Scared Money Don't Make Money, which you just referenced, right? This Gambler collection has been one of our best sellers. It's really, really simple, but I think I get the allure, right? It's like, it's, it's just very simple. It doesn't say Gambler in your face, but, you know, 
know, takes out the vowels and gambler. So guys, go check out fademe.store. We got tons of new products coming on the way as well, but tons of products over there just overall. We got great hats, great sweatshirts, great t-shirts, all that stuff. Go check it out, fademe.store. Uh, let's use code, I'll give you guys a discount, huh? Code Friday, take a percentage off your order. Make sure to use that today only, obviously, because it is Friday. Use code Friday over on fademe.store. You get a discount at checkout. So go ahead and check it out. But let's go ahead and jump back into the last few games here. Next up, we have OKC taking on Miami. Miami coming off of a loss last night to Dallas. OKC should be well-rested coming off of a win against Portland a couple nights back. Um, This is a huge number, and I assume it's because of the fact that Miami is on a back-to-back because um, if it doesn't have to do with that, I don't really see the the true you know reason why or uh, excuse me OKC would be minus eight and a half. Like I think this is a Miami team that should be able to match up fairly well uh, against them overall. Last time that they played, Miami actually won. Um, that was this year they won. I know I think that they kept they kept it two within this line. Excuse me. So they beat this line against the spread. I believe OKC won within um, eight points or so. So. Um, Miami would have covered this last game, and it's just a big number. I'm going to lean towards Miami. I don't think I make it a final play because I find it, as you probably should too, find it very tough to bet against OKC as good as they are, right? So um, I understand why this line is where it is because, again, OKC is good, and it's a back-to-back, but it's just too big for me to lay as OKC, even at home. So I'll lean towards Miami. In terms of a total in this spot, we're looking at a 224 total. Um, Give me the under. I think that Miami, you know, if I do think Miami can kind of keep this game remotely close, uh, they end up kind of you know putting their defense on um and pressuring them on to okc and a weird stat a lot of the times you look at back-to-back teams and it's like they go over because they have tired legs defensively miami on back-to-backs this year have covered unders in 70 or what is it i think it's like 67 percent of games this season so one th- nearly two-thirds of all their back-to-back games have gone under so giving them a little bit of credit there um in terms of the, the total in terms of player prop there's just one that i could take a flyer on it's nothing that i really love but chet holmgren over one and a half threes he had the volume he took five threes last time he played miami I mean, this is obviously a Miami team um, that isn't going to make anything easy in the paint or at the rim. Um, not that they are light on the perimeter, but I could see Chet Holmgren being like, I don't really want to mix it up down low with Bam. So I'll st- sit out here and shoot five threes again. And if he does shoot five threes again, I think he makes two, not one this time. So I'll, I'll look at the over in him as well. But again, it's just kind of like a game script play. It's not like he's really trended to this line or anything like that. He's only hit uh, the over here in four of his last 10 games and in one of his last five. And he's had multiple games on the season where he's had zero threes made you know what I mean so uh, it's more of a matchup thing than it is trusting Holmgren but again he had five threes that he took last time they played Miami all right we got the Lakers hosting the Bucks here this is going to be an interesting one to keep an eye on Giannis on the injury report LeBron James on the injury report Anthony Davis on the injury report like all we need is Damian Lillard to be on the injury report and then every player you care about is on the injury report here so keep an eye on that let's assume everyone plays uh just for the breakdown of this game and I wouldn't want to be the Lakers tonight I do think that the Bucks come back with sort of a, a lot of vengeance after getting pumped by the Warriors um and yes they're on a road trip yes it's actually not the best spot for uh the Bucks in the middle of a road trip right and it actually is a bounce back spot for the Lakers too as they got beat by uh the Kings but I just think that this Bucks team um is going to be fired up and we can't forget that like the Bucks were playing some of the best basketball in the NBA coming out of the All-Star break. They were one of, if not the best defensive team out of the All-Star break as well. So, uh, yes, everyone thinks that they're this offensive team and and the changes they made this offseason, you know, their defense got worse. It had been on absolute fire. So let's not make one game kind of determine that this Bucks team's back to stinking it up against the spread and on the road and all that, okay? If, we, if they get crushed by the Lakers, then we can kind of think about that. But I think that they bounce back in this spot. Again, a lot of injuries to consider, so keep an eye on that injury report. In terms of the total here, I did just hype up the Bucks defense, and I think I'm going to stick to that. I think this game goes under just by a couple, maybe around 228, 229, 230 at maximum. Um, so, yeah, I like this spot. Last time these two teams played as well, it was a 115 to 106 game. Uh, that was last season, so it's not really worth putting too much weight into now. But nonetheless, some, some familiar faces still in that game. So give me the under there, too. A player prop that I'm considering is going to be Brooke Lopez, over one and a half three-pointers made on the season. Uh, no team has allowed more threes to the center. Uh, Uh, than the Lakers. They're 30th ranked in terms of three-pointers made to opposing centers. Uh, A couple other leans that I would have 
LeBron James over eight and a half assists. Uh, when he played uh, the Milwaukee Bucks last time, he had 11 assists. Again, you're dating it back uh, kind of far, so not not all that worth putting into. Um, but he has hit this in six of his last 10. He's coming off a 13 assist game here um, against the Kings. And then I'd also consider Giannis's under an assist. Now, why, why is under if I think this is going to be a good game? His, his assist line is at six and a half right now. You can get it for minus 120 on DraftKings and BetMGM. FanDuel and Caesars both have this in the minus 130, so I do think there's a little bit of value there. And Giannis hasn't hit this in four straight games. He's hit it. He's hit the under here in five of his last six games. That's all of the games coming out of the All-Star break, right? And you're going up against a Lakers team that, you know, they allow plenty of assists overall and stuff. But I do think that this is going to be a game in which Giannis wants to get to the free throw line and score the ball. I would look at his points, but uh, even him getting to 31 points, which is lines at 30 and a half, hasn't been the easiest ride as of late so it would be something that I would consider there for sure but I almost want to like bet his points by taking the under in his assists if that makes sense so there's a player prop that uh, a few player props in this game that I would consider all right, we're closing it out with an absolute banger of a game here we got probably the best game on today's slate the Portland Trailblazers taking on the Rockets here uh, Portland getting six points at home, total sitting at 219 right now. We can move through this one fairly quickly. Uh, I do think the Rockets are the better team. Is six points a little bit too much to lay? No. They're on the road. They stink on the road, but guess what? The Portland Trailblazers just stink, okay? So, uh, yeah, this isn't going to be a game I'm probably betting myself, uh, but I would say that if I were to bet it, I wouldn't really want to consider Portland in this spot, um, you know, they have tons of injuries going on, as they have for a while here. And Houston's coming off a loss in a game in which they kind of blew, like, against the Clippers. They were up by 20 at one point in that game. They lose the game by six points. So they should be kind of fired up and want to come into this to make a statement. In terms of the total, 219, uh, I feel like that's a very, very sharp number. I'll lean towards the over, uh, just based on kind of what we've seen from Houston's offense and Portland's offense as well. Like, both these teams have actually been scoring a decent amount of points, so go and do it. We know Houston's defense is not as great on the road as it is at home, so... So go and score, you know, 110 apiece, guys, And when we hit the over here. Player props, nothing really that I'm loving in this game. Uh, <laughs> I could troll and, and say that I want to look at Alpi Sangoon's uh, unders again, but we literally took his under points, rebounds, and assists last game, and he damn near hit it in the first quarter, first half. But, uh, yeah, not really something I'm considering again here. Uh, but, guys, it's going to wrap it up for today's show. If you did, if you did enjoy, comment. Friday in the comments. That's also the discount code over on FadeMe.store. If you made it this far in the video, comment Friday. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. We're so damn close to 60K. Pumping some crowd noise for that news. Uh, appreciate everything you guys have done to support the channel and everything like that as of late. Um, really, really do I mean that. So hopefully you guys are enjoying these shows. More and more content coming. Like we posted another full-length video yesterday. Uh, tons of stuff coming out. Make sure you guys are following me over on my socials. They popped up throughout the show here. And uh, yeah, let's have a good Friday. Start the weekend off right. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. Catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.